Welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to review some practice problems on exponential growth functions. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple relatively simple problems. Uh, first, to match the function with its graph. So in this case, we're really going to have to just start identifying values of x and figuring out what the values of y are going to be. So we're really substituting in values for x and coming up with the values for y. So f of x is equal to uh, 2 to the x is the same as y is equal to 2 to the x. All right, so if you see f of x, just consider it to be y in this case. So if I substitute a value, it looks like this is going to be an exponential growth function. So we can eliminate uh, a here, and uh, we can eliminate, and it's not going to be a negative value, right? So we're going to, uh, our exponential value is going to be increasing uh, and moving towards positive infinity, at least in the first one. So I can eliminate uh, A, C, and E uh, as possibilities. So now I want to substitute in values for X and figure out what the Y value is going to be. So if I uh, substitute a value of 0 in for X, 2 to the 0 is going to be 1. So B is a possibility. Uh, here F, I substitute a value in 0 for X, I get out 1. Here it's 1 half, so this is not going to work. And then here is 0, 4. <coughs> Uh, when I substitute a value and again 0, I get 1. So my answer here is going to be B. So I, the way that I figure this out is I, I'm going to identify values, the input values, and their relative output values. So I put in a 0, I get out a 1. I put in a 1, and I get out a 2. And I can see that uh, those two coordinates match up with B. I'm going to do the same thing here for uh, number 2. Now I'm dealing with a negative value. Uh, for uh, B, and it's going to be negative 1 really for A, but the value is going to be inverted uh, in terms of the Y output. So let's again put in some values for X and let's see what happens on the back end. So I know now that B and D and F are not going to be results because my value for Y will always be a uh, negative result. So I have, this is like negative 1 times 2 to the X. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's substitute a value in uh, 0 for uh, x, and I get, I'm going to get out a negative 1 for y. So anything to the 0 is always going to be 1 times a negative 1 gives me negative 1. So I have 0, negative 1 is a possibility. Uh, and then I substitute in 1, and I get uh, negative 1 times 2 to the 1, which is negative 1 times 2, which is equal to negative 2. So I can see here that 0, 1, and 1, negative 2 are going to be my results. And I identify the answer now as A. All right, moving on to a couple more problems. I want to graph the function. And this is going to be 4 to the x. So I substitute a value in for 0, or 0 for x. I'm going to get out 1 for y. And then I substitute in 1 for x. And you can see that I am going to have 4 for y, and 2 for x gives me 16, so I'm already off the charts. Uh, I know that the value of y is never going to be equal to 0. y is equal to 4x, so regardless of what x is, even if it's a negative value, the value for y gets closer and closer to 0, so my asymptote is going to be the x-axis, so my graph looks something like this. A little bit difficult to draw sometimes on the screen. Okay, next is y is equal to 3 times 3 to the x. Okay, so I'm going to uh, substitute 0 in for x. I get y is equal to 3 times 3 to the 0, or y is equal to 3 times 1, or y is equal to 3. So when I have 0 input, I get 3 as an output. When I substitute 1 in for x, I get 3 times 3, so 3 to the 1 is 3, so I have y is equal to 3 times 3 to the 1, which is 3 times 3, which is 9. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So I'm already going off of the graph. If I substitute a negative 1 in uh, for x, I get y is equal to 3 times uh, 3 to the negative 1, which is 3 times 1 over 3, which is going to be equal to 1. So negative 1 gives me 1 here. And my graph is going to end up looking something like this. OK. So again, the strategy here is to identify points 
uh, for an x values that you're going to place as inputs and substitute in for x in the function and then you calculate what your results are, plot the points, and it should look like an exponential growth curve. All right, uh, account balance. So we deposit $5,000 in an account that earns 3% annual interest. Find the balance after one year if the interest is compounded with the given frequency. So we're just going to do quarterly. And we recall that the formula is going to be the ending balance is equal to is going to be equal to the principal, uh, the initial balance, 1 plus the rate over the number of times we're compounding it. And that's all taken to the number of times compounded to whatever that yearly amount is. So we're saying it's one year, so t is going to be 1. And we're compounding this quarterly. So I deposit a is going to be equal to 5,000 times 1 plus my rate is 3% interest expressed as a decimal 03. I'm compounding it quarterly. So again, we're just going to do the quarterly amount. So every four times a year. And so again, n is 4. And t is just, we're just going to do this for one year. And we want to find out what the balance is. So I find out that a is going to be equal to 5,000. And we're going to calculate uh, 0.03 divided by 4 is equal to 0 0.0075. We add 1 to that, and 1.0075, and we're going to raise that to the fourth power. That gives me approximately 1.03, and then we're going to multiply that all by uh, 5,000, which was the initial investment. Uh, so I have approximately 1.03 as the result. It's a little bit more than 1.03. Uh, and I end up with a value of approximately $5,151.70. I'm sorry, $5 now, if I do this annually, I'll give you the formula. You can do your calculations on your own. Principles, 5,000. I have 1 plus uh, 0.03 over 1. So it's really, you don't really need these values here and then here because the n is going to be 1, you just end up rewriting the equation uh, without really requiring n. And your answer will be, will be this value uh, if it's just after one year. OK, last set of uh, problems uh, involving translations. Uh, so I'm going to graph uh, f of x is equal to 4x, uh, 4 to the x minus 2. If I graph my initial parent function, it's going to look something like this. And now it should actually cross through. Well, my original parent function right, should cross through number y is equal to 1. So let me redo that graph. So when x is equal to 0, I pass through uh, the point zero, 1. And now I'm going to translate this graph. And I'm going to translate it in. That's just an approximation. You translate this graph. I'm shifting this graph now two units horizontally to the right. So now, uh, when I have a value of okay, I've just rewritten this graph here. Uh, y is equal to four x, and I have identified two point zero one. So when x is equal to zero, four to the zero is one. I'm going to move through that point zero one. And when x is equal to one. Uh, y, the output's going to be equal to 4, uh, 4. 4 to the 1 is equal to 4. And now I'm going to shift or translate this graph two units to the right. Uh, so I'm going to do that in red. And this is the only problem we're going to do. Or maybe we'll do the second problem just for fun. So I'm going to shift this graph two units to the right. And I end up, I'm going to identify my two points here, here, and then one here. All right, so as I shift the graph two units to the right, when x is equal to 2, the value is going to be equal to, of the output y is going to be equal to 1. And then when x is equal to 3, the value is of y, the output, is going to be equal to 4. All right, so you can see here, if I substitute x, uh, 2 in for x, I get 4 now to the 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 uh, to the 0 is 1. So my input is 2, my output is 1. 
If I substitute in 3 as the input, 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 to the 1 is equal to 4. So you can see how we've shifted the graph really two units to the right. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. All right, you've convinced me to do this last problem. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to graph the, let's just call it the initial function, and then we'll do the shifting. Y is equal to 2 to the X. So I substitute in a value of 0 for X, and I get out a value of 1. 2 to 0 is 1. I substitute it in a value of, uh, let's say, 2, and I get an output of 4. So I'm going to graph my result. And I have the two points 2, 4, and 0, 1. And now I'm going to translate this graph. All right, so now we have our second function, which is the illustrated function, y is equal to 2x plus 1. And we're going to see what happens is we're going to shift the graph up by one unit. So, and also we forgot to state the domain and range of the first, so we'll go back and do that as well. So now I have y is equal to 2 to the x plus 1. I substitute in 0 for x, and I get 2 to the 0, which is 1, plus 1 gives me uh, 2. So now my graph is going to be here, and that point is going to be 0, 2. And now I substitute in 2 for x, and I get 2 to the x, which is 4, plus 1 is going to be 5. So I have 2 now, and 5 is my second point, and you can see now I'm just shifting the graph up by one unit. Right? Whereas in this, I've shifted the graph to the right horizontally, now I'm shifting the graph up by uh, one. So I've shifted the graph here by right by two, and here up by one. So we remember our formula y is equal to a b to the x minus h plus k, where h is the horizontal shift and k is the vertical shift. So let's talk about domain and range, and then we'll be all through. Uh, so we talk about the domain and range. I can put in any value for x here and get out an output uh, for y. And so the domain is going to be all real numbers. So I'm going to write uh, domain here, all real numbers. Domain, all real numbers. And my range now is going to be all real numbers greater than 0. So I'm going to say y is going to be greater than 0. So the graph is similar. I'm just shifting it out to the right. The asymptote is still the x-axis. I'm still approaching infinity as x gets larger and larger. All right, so in the second function, we see that in this case, this value here will never get to 0. So I say this value here never gets to 0, and the function will be, uh, this value here never gets to 0 plus 1. So now we're talking about the range. So let's go back and take a look at the do domain first. I can put in any value for x and get a real number result for y. So any number of uh, x, any value for x will give me a real number result. So I say my domain is all real numbers. And then I consider, again, the fact that this value here will get closer and closer to 0 but never get to 0. So I have a value that approximates or gets closer to 0 but never gets to there. And then I add 1 to that. So now the range is going to be y is greater than 1. So it's going to be greater than, as we consider this, 0 plus 1. So I've shifted the graph up by 1. And in doing that, the range also increases by 1. All right, that's enough, I think, for today. And you can go ahead and ponder that and do some of your practice work. And uh, we'll talk about exponential decay in the next edition of Odd Math.